All right, eighth grade Latin. Nice to see you. Hope you're excited to get back to work. But even if you're not, here we are. Um, I'd like to begin with a word of prayer as we go through this trying time together. Let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, you are in charge of all things. You control even the virus that is devastating our world. So we pray that you'd help us to trust you and to remember that you are an ever-present help in time of trouble, that you would help us to be diligent about our tasks, even as we are concerned about the new situation we find ourselves in. Please help us to look to you, help all people to turn to you through your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be faithful in our work, to learn together, grant your blessing to us, grant us to finish this year strong, and to adapt to these new ways of learning that we would be successful and keep us safe, we ask, in the name of Christ. Amen. All right, so we're picking up here in Lesson 17, and we are in a new unit, Unit 5, in which we're going to be covering a lot of passive voice verbs, passive voice verbs, and we'll talk about that later. Also in this chapter, we're going to talk about the ablative of agent, we won't get to that in this lesson, but we will talk about it in uh, this lesson, this chapter. All right. So here we are on lesson 17. So I want to make sure that you have your book open to page 179. Also have your grammar ready to turn to the section on passive verbs here fairly soon. So here we are at 179, and we are talking about voice and we see this ball, boy uh, throwing the ball. So what have we learned so far about verbs? And this goes all the way back to lesson nine when we started talking about different verbs. You know, there's four conjugations and they have different characteristics. And we've been focusing on three of the main con characteristics. They have person, meaning first, second, and third. I throw the ball, you throw the ball, excuse me, he, she, it throws the ball. They have number, I throw the ball, we throw the ball. He throws the football, they throw the football. They do their homework, he does his homework, okay? They also have tense, meaning time. I am throwing the ball, I was throwing the ball, I will throw the ball, he was throwing the ball, he is throwing the ball. But verbs also have, and here's a fourth characteristic that we're now covering in this unit, they also have voice. And just like there's two choices with number, singular and plural, there are two choices with voice in Latin. <coughs> Some languages have three voices, actually. But anyway, the ball, boy throws the ball, that's what you see in the picture there. The boy is throwing the ball, and these. this is the active voice. All the verbs that we've been doing so far have been in the active voice. Some of you have tried to translate them in the passive voice, um, but we've only been assigned active voice verbs. Now we're going to be adding the passive. Now the rule on the middle of page 179 says that when the verb is in the active voice, the subject is the person or thing that does the action. Excuse me. Um, so the subject names who is doing the action, but we could also say the ball is being thrown or the ball was thrown and we could identify who threw it by the boy. And in this case, the subject, this is the rule at the top of page 180, so you can turn the page. The subject names the person or thing to which the action is done. Active, the subject names who's doing the action. Passive, the subject names to which the action is being done or that which is to, to being done to. All right, so here if we look at exercise 199, we've got some examples in our own language. America is is being praised by many nations. So America is the subject. In this case, America is being acted upon. America is being 
praised. Christ was crucified by Roman soldiers. So again, if we were going to if we we're going to parse this, it would be third person, right? Christ. It would be perfect tense was crucified. It would be singular, right? Not many Christ. It was Christ. And it would be a passive voice. So Christ was crucified. And who was he crucified by? By the Roman soldiers. So it's passive voice. All right. Now, the forms of the passive. And here's where you're going to have your grammar book. The forms of the passive have lots of urs and urs, ours and you ours. All right. So we'll take a look at that in a second. So this is in your Henley Grammar, section 243, which is going to be on page 56. But before we get to that, and again, we're looking at first conjugation in this lesson. Just like we went through all four conjugations, you know, lesson 9, lesson 10, lesson 12, and 13. We went through all the four conjugations with the, uh, the three tenses on the perfect stem and then the three tenses on the perfect, uh, the present stem, and then the perfect stem. We're going to do that here as well. So here is the active voice. This is the one that you already know, right? Laudo, I praise. Laudamus, we praise. And then the tense, imperfect tense, laudabam, I was praising. Laudabat, he was praising. Or the future tense, bo bi 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 bu. Laudabo, I shall praise. Laudabis, you shall praise. Laudabimus, we shall praise. So that's the ones you already know. OST, mustis, unt. Okay, if you need to, stop the audio, stop the video at this point and read through these or just run through them. OST, mustis, unt, bamba spot, bamba spot to spont. Okay, now what we're going to do with the passive is we're either going to add or we're going to replace add or replace. And again, this is covered also at the bottom of your, in your textbook on page 180 at the bottom as we look at these different forms. So here we are with sections 243 to 245. This is the first conjugation, present imperfect future, indicative mood in the passive voice. So the O becomes an OR. The As becomes an aris, the at becomes an ator, amus becomes amor, atis amini, ant antur. So often we're adding an r or a ur. See how we add the ur to the third person? Or we add the r to the first person, but the second person is quite different. You do see that s in the singular. But the, the plural, it's almost like it's completely different. So you really got to focus on the second person, the you and ye, so that you can understand that. And then when you look down at the um, imperfect, laudabam, the M is replaced by an R. Laudabas, the S is replaced by an aris. So again, the the rs, the r's are thrown in the in there. The third person, we add a ur. Again, the third person is going to be generally the easiest one to spot. It's the first and seconds that may be a little bit tricky. So I'd encourage you to stop the video at this point, read through these several times. Or ars ator amor amini antor. And then read through the whole word, laudor, laudaris, laudator, laudamor, laudamini, laudantor. So that you really get a feel for how this passive works. And again, if you look at the top of page 181 in your textbook, it'll actually walk you through these transformations. Laudo, laudabam. Uh, laudo becomes laudor. Laudabam, I was praising Laudabar, I was being praised. The other thing I want you to notice is how when we translate them, you're usually going to add a form of the verb to be to indicate the passive, right? The ball, I throw the ball, the ball is being thrown. 
is being thrown. So you add that being word to indicate the passive. So a form of the verb to be is what you're going to add to the English translation to indicate the passive. All right, so here we are on page 181, exercise 200. And what we have to do here is take the actives and turn them into the passives. And by the way, I'm not always going to type out the macrons when I do the slideshows, so just bear with that. Um, I'm putting enough work into them as it is. Anyway, voco is first singular present, I call. And what we're going to do here is supplement or add to with an R, vocor. So I call, I am being called. How about terepo, I terrify. Again, we're going to supplement here or add to tereor. So we're just adding this R. So again, R's, U-R's. I terrify, I am being terrified by the dinosaur or by the amount of homework I have. Audie bomb. Now we've changed our tense here, right? We're still first singular, I, but now we've changed to imperfect tense. I was hearing. And here, for the imperfect tense, instead of supplementing, we're going to replace Audie bar, Audie bar. I was being heard. I was hearing, Audie bomb, Audie bar, I was being heard. And again, the English, we're going to add a form of the verb be or being to indicate this passive voice. Laudabit. Now we've shifted person, right? And we've shifted what else? We've shifted our tense. So he shall praise, right? He shall praise. Future tense. So again, for this one, we're going to add, we're going to supplement. So laudabit becomes laudabitur, laudabit, laudabitur. So he shall praise, he shall be praised. He shall praise, active voice, he shall be praised, passive voice. Vinchemus, vinchemus, we are conquering. So this is, we've changed from first singular to first plural, and in this case, again, we're going to replace, we're going to replace the S with, an, with our friend, the R, Vin Chamer, Vin Chamer. We are conquering, we are being conquered. We are conquering, we are being conquered. Honitas, so now we've changed person to second person. And again, here's where we're going to see some significant change, okay? You place or you put becomes ponitimini, ponitimini. You are being placed. You are being placed. Audient, this is a nice fourth conjugation. And this is a, uh, I believe this is a present tense. They are hearing, and we're going to change it by supplementing. Adienter, adienter. They are being heard. They are being heard. Now, we have some new vocabulary here in this section at the top of page 182. They are three first conjugation verbs. So, we have... Administro, administrare, administravi, administratus. I managed to manage. I managed, managed. Okay. Apello. And can you think of an English word we get from that? Well, appellant or appeal. Okay. So, appello, I call upon, I address. Appello. Apelare, apelavi, apelatus. What I want you to notice is that the verb confirmo does not mean confirm. Okay, so again, just because we have an English word 
that is virtually exactly the same as a Latin word does not mean that that English word means what the Latin word does, okay? So confirmo means I encourage or I strengthen. So it has the idea of, if you do want to think of it as confirm, it's like confirming a relationship, okay? Not confirming your reservation at a restaurant, okay? All right, and then we have some review vocabulary. They are first conjugation verbs. Notice how the first two are irregular. Do, dari, dedi, ad uvo, ad uvari, ad uvi, ad utis. So these are irregular verbs. They don't follow the normally o, ari, avi, atus of the first conjugation. And again, the reason why we're reviewing these is because they're going to be used in the exercises. Colico may be one that you want to review. You can see how the word loco is in their location, place. So colico, I place, I station. Uh, can you think of an English word that we get from colico? Collection, right? Things that are stationed together to be a collection. All right. So let's take a look at exercise 204. And these are just short, simple sentences, almost all of which use passive verbs. So number one, Maria Appellabator. Maria Appellabator. So can you pick out the tense, right? You see that Bombas bot. Now, if this was active, you would translate it as Mary was calling. But of course, it's not active because we're starting to recognize that R and U R that's added to the end of the, um, it's, it's either added to or replaces, like in the first person, it replaces. So this is passive. And so it means Mary was being called upon. Imperfect tense. Mary was being called upon. Let's take a look at number three. Amici conformantur. Amici conformantur. And again, this does not mean that the friends are encouraging. The friends are encouraging each other. But it's passive, right? Tur, unter, unter, unt becomes unter. And so, how would you translate it? The friends are being encouraged. The friends are being strengthened. Okay? So there are some examples. And here's your assignment. I would like you to do 6 to 10, these really short sentences here. And again, these are all going to be passives. And then I would like you to do the first two of 205. Uh, those are kind of long sentences, and they've got some pronouns in there. Make sure you spot the pronoun e in number two. Um, and I'd like this by Thursday morning. And I'd like you to either type your answers on a Word document or send a photo. Um, and again, make sure it's legible if you are going to write it out. Otherwise, type it on a Word document and you can send it to me. My email is bnolder at tcca-nh.com. All right. Great to be with you this way. Study hard. I'm, look, I'm glad we're able to get back together doing Latin. God bless.